apprentice to your band. It was through an error. What? No matter. The mistake was ours, not yours, and I was in honor bound by it. An error? What error? I may not tell you. It would reflect upon my well-loved Ruth. Nay, <laughs> dear master, my mind has long been gnawed by the cankering tooth of mystery. Better have it out at once. <laughs> When Frederick was a little lad, he proved so brave and daring. His father thought he apprenticed him to some career seafaring. I was a lass, his nursery maid, and so it fell to my lot to take and mind the promising boy apprentice to a pilot. A life not bad for a hardy lad, though surely not a high lot. Though I'm a nurse, you might do worse than make your boy a pilot. <laughs> I was a stupid nursery maid, on breakers always steering. And I did not catch the word aright through being hard of hearing, mistaking my instructions, which within my brain did gyrate. <laughs> I took and found this promising boy apprentice to a pirate. A sad mistake it was to make and doom him to a vile lot. <laughs> I bound him to a pirate crew instead of to a pilot. I soon found out beyond all doubt the scope of this disaster, but I hadn't the face to return to my place and break it to my master. A nursery maid is not afraid of what you people call work. So I made up my mind to go as a kind of piratical maid of all work. <laughs> and that is how you find me now, a member of your shy lot, which you wouldn't have found had he Apprentice to a pilot. Oh, pardon, Frederick, pardon. Oh, Rise, right, sweet one. I have long pardoned you. The two words were so much alike. They were, but they still are, though years have rolled over their heads. But this afternoon, my obligation ceases. 
Individually, I love you all with affection unspeakable. But collectively, I look upon you with a disgust that amounts to absolute detestation. Oh, pity me, my beloved friends, for such is my sense of duty that once out of my indentures, I shall feel myself bound to devote myself heart and soul to your extermination. Format! Format! Well, Frederick, if you conscientiously feel it is your duty to destroy us, we cannot blame you for acting on that conviction. Always act in accordance with the dictates of your conscience, me boy, and chance the consequences. Besides, we can offer you but little temptation to remain with us. We don't seem to make piracy pay. I'm sure I don't know why, but we don't. I know why, but alas, I mustn't tell you, it wouldn't be right. Why not, me boy? It's only... Half past eleven, you're one of us till the clock strikes twelve. True, and until then, you are bound to protect our interests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well then, it is my duty as a pirate to tell you that you are too tender-hearted. Well, for instance, you make a point of never attacking a weaker party than yourselves. And when you attack a stronger party, you invariably get thrashed. There is some truth in that. Then again, you make a point of never molesting an orphan. Oh. Of course, we are orphans ourselves and know what it is. <laughs> yes, but it has got about. And what is the consequence? Everyone we capture says he's an orphan. By the last three ships we took proved to be manned entirely by orphans, and so we had to let them go. One would think that Great Britain's mercantile navy were recruited solely from her orphan asylums, which we know is not the case. But, but hang it all! You wouldn't have us absolutely merciless! Now there's my difficulty. Until 12 o'clock, I would. Yes! Yay! After 12, I wouldn't. Oh. Has ever a man placed in so delicate a situation? And Ruth, your own Ruth, whom you love so well and who has won her middle-aged way to your boyish heart, what is to become of her? Oh, he will take you with him! <laughs> <laughs> Well, Ruth, I feel some little difficulty about you. It is true that I admire you very much, but I have been constantly at sea since I was eight years old, and yours is the only woman's face I have seen during that time. I think it is a sweet face. It is. Oh, it is. I say I think it is. That is my impression. But as I have never had an opportunity of comparing you with other women, it is just possible I may be mistaken. True. What a terrible thing it would be if I were to marry this innocent person and then find out that she is on the whole plane. Oh, uh, <laughs> Ruth is very well, very well indeed. Yes, there are the remains of a fine woman about Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> do you really think so? I do. Well, then I will not be so selfish as to take her. Oh. Oh. In justice to her and in consideration for you, I will leave her behind. Oh, no, Frederick, this cannot be. We are rough men rough. who lead a rough life. Rough, rough. But we are not so utterly heartless as to deprive thee of thy love. I think I am right in saying there is not one here who would rob thee of this inestimable treasure for all the world holds dear. Not one. I thought there wasn't. Keep thy love, Frederick. Keep thy love. You're very good, I'm sure. Well, that's not top of the tide and we must be off. Farewell, Frederick. And when your process of extermination begins, may our deaths be as swift and painless as you can conveniently make them. I will, by the love I have for you, I swear it. Would that you could render this extermination unnecessary by accompanying me back to civilization. No, Frederick, this cannot be. I don't think much of our profession, but contrasted with respectability, it is comparatively honest. No, Frederick, I shall live and die a pirate king. Hey! Oh, better far to live and die under the free black flag I fly than play a sanctimonious part with a pirate head and a pirate heart. Away to the cheating world go you, where pirates all are well to do, but I'll be true to the song I sing, and live and die a pirate king, for I am a pirate king. 
a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. You are the a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is a rough, rough pirate king, a rough, rough pirate king. <laughs> When I sally forth to seek my prey, I help myself in a royal way. I sink a few more ships, it's true, than a well-bred monarch ought to do. But many a king on the first-class throne, if he wants to call his crown his own, must manage somehow to get through. More does he work than ever I do. For I am a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. For I am a pirate king. You are a pirate king. And it is, it is a glorious thing to be a pirate king. It is a rough, a pirate king, a rough, a pirate I must be circumspect. You see, you are considerably older than I. A lad of 21 usually looks for a wife of 17. A wife of 17? You will find me a wife of a thousand. No, but I shall find you a wife of 47, and that is quite enough. <laughs> Ruth, uh, tell me candidly and without reserve, compared with other women, how are you? I will answer you truthfully, master. <coughs> I have a slight cold, but otherwise I am quite well. I'm sorry for your cold, but I was referring rather to your personal appearance. Compared with other women, are you beautiful? Oh, I have been told so, dear master. Uh, but lately? Oh, no. Years and years ago. What do you think of yourself? It is a delicate question to answer, but I think I am a fine woman. That is your candid opinion. Yes, I should be deceiving you if I told you otherwise. Thank you, Ruth, I believe you. <gasps> for I'm sure you would not practice on my inexperience. I wish to do the right thing. And if, I say if, you really are a fine woman, then your age will be no obstacle to our union. Ah, <sighs> oh, surely I hear voices. Who has ventured to approach our all but inaccessible lair? Can it be Custom House? It doesn't sound like Custom House. Fusion! It is the voices of young girls, and he should see them! I am lost! My own and marvelous and very beautiful maidens! Lost! 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 How lovely! How surpassingly lovely is the plain song! What grace! What delicacy! What refinement! And Ruth! Ruth told me she was beautiful. Oh, false one, you have deceived me. I have deceived you. Yes, deceived me. You told me you were fair as gold. And most of them I not so. And now I see you're plain and old. And sure I'm not a just so. Upon my innocence you play. I'm not the one to not so. Your face is aligned, your hair is grey. It's that you will be not so. Faithless woman to deceive me, I who trust it so. Master, master, do not leave me, hear me ere you go. Faithless woman. Master, master. Faithless woman. Master, master. Faithless woman to 
Before these gentle maidens, I dare not show in this alarming costume. Oh, no, no, I must remain in close concealment until I can appear in decent clothing. Remember, 
poor papa is not as young as we are, and we have come over rather to the country. But how thoroughly delightful it is to be so entirely alone. Why, in all probability, we are the first human beings who ever set foot on this enchanted spot, except the mermaids. It's a great place for mermaids, who are only human beings down to the well. And you can't be said strictly to set foot anywhere. Tails they may, but feet they cannot. Oh. <laughs> oh, but what shall we do until Papa and the servants arrive with the luncheon? Ah. We are quite alone, and the sea is as smooth as glass. Suppose we take off our shoes. <gasps> And stockings. Oh! And panel. Oh, yes, yes, the very thing. Stop, ladies, pray. Oh. Uh, I had intended not to intrude myself upon your notice in this effective but alarming costume. But under these peculiar circumstances, it is my bounden duty to inform you that your proceedings will not be unwitnessed. But who are you, sir, speak? I am a pilot. A pirate? Oh. Ladies, do not shun me. This evening I renounce my vile profession. And to that end of pure and fearless maidens, for oh, blushing birds of ever blooming beauty, I saw at heart, I saw at heart implore your kind assistance. How pitiful his tale!
and hurt you feeling. Senses. Men who stick at no offenses will anon be here. Piracy, their dreadful trade is. Pray you get you hence, young ladies, while the coast is clear. No, we must not lose our senses. If they stick at no offenses, we should not be here. Piracy, their dreadful trade is. Nice companions for young ladies. Let us be. Model of a modern major general. I have information, vegetable, animal, and mineral. I know the kings of England, and I quote the facts historical from Marathon to Waterloo in order categoricals. I'm very well acquainted too with matters mathematical. I understand equations both the simple and quadratical. About binomial theorem, I'm teeming with a lot of news. Uh, with many cheerful facts about the square and the hypotenuse. <laughs> I'm very good at integral and differential calculus. I know the scientific names of beings and immaculus. In short, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. In short, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, he is the very model of a modern major general. I know our mythic history, King Arthur's, and Sir Caradox. I answer hard acrostics. I have a pretty taste for paradox. I quote an elegiac, saw the crimes of Heliogabalus. In conics, I implore peculiarities, parabolas. <laughs> I can tell undoubted Raphael's from Jared Dawson's Ophanes. I know the croaking chorus from the frogs of Aristophanes. Then I can hum a few of which I've heard the music's dinner for. Dinner for, dinner for, dinner for. Oh. I'd whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense pinafore. I'd whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense pinafore. I'd whistle all the airs from that infernal nonsense pinafore. I can 
writer watching Bill in Babylonic cuneiform and tell you every detail of Caractacus's uniform. In short, a matter's vegetable, animal and mineral. I am the very model of a modern major general. In short, a matter's vegetable, animal and mineral. He is the very model of a modern major general. Wait for it. In fact, when I know what is meant by mamelon and ravelin, when I can tell it sight a mouse or rifle from a javelin, when such affairs are sorties and surprises, I'm more wary at. And when I know precisely what is meant by commissariat. When I have learned what progress has been made in modern gunnery. When I know more of tactics than a novice in a nunnery. In short, when I have a smattering of elemental strategy. Strategy, strategy. Oh, thank you. You'll say a bit the Major General has never sat at you. Say a bit of Major General has never sat at you. Say a bit of Major General has never sat at you. Say a bit of Major General has never sat at you. For my military knowledge, though I'm plucky and adventury, has only been brought down to the beginning of the century. But still, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, I am the very model of a modern major general. But still, in matters vegetable, animal, and mineral, he is the very model of a modern major I should like to have some idea of what's going on. Oh, Papa, oh, we were... to me. I'll explain in two words. Mm -hmm. We propose to marry your daughters. Dear me. Against our wills, Papa. Against our wills. Oh, but you mustn't do that. I... Um, May I ask? Uh, this is a uh, picturesque uniform, but I'm not familiar with it. What are you? We are all single gentlemen. Yes, I gathered that. <laughs> Anything else? No, nothing else. Papa, don't believe them. They are pirates, the famous pirates of Penzance. The pirates of Penzance! I've often heard of them. All except this gentleman, who was a pirate once, but is out of his indentures today and who means to lead a blameless life evermore. <laughs> Wait a bit. I object to pirates as sons-in-law. We object to major generals as fathers-in-law. <laughs> but we waive that point. We do not press it. We look over it. Ah, an idea. And do you mean to tell me that you would deliberately rob me of these, the sole remaining props of my old age? And leave me to go through the remainder of my life, unfriended, unprotected, and alone? Well, yes, that's the idea. <laughs> Tell me, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Oh, oh death death it all. All. Here we go again. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? Orphan? Yes, orphan. Have you ever known what it is to be one? I said orphan. Orphan, orphan, orphan! I don't think we quite understand one another. I ask you, have you ever known what it is to be an orphan? And you say orphan. Now, as I understand you, you are merely repeating the word orphan to show that you understand me. I didn't repeat the word orphan. I beg your pardon, you did indeed. I only repeated it once. True, but you repeated it. But not orphan. Stop! I think I see where we're getting confused. When you said orphan, Orphan? Did you mean orphan, a person who has lost his parents, or orphan frequently? Oh, I beg pardon. I see what you mean. Frequently. Ah, you said orphan frequently. No, only once! Exactly! <laughs> you said orphan frequently only once. Oh. Oh. Dark and dismal fate, forgo your cruel employ. Have pity on my lonely state. I am an orphan boy. An, an orphan, orphan boy. An orphan boy. How sad. Children who you see are all 
that I can call my own. Poor fellow. Take them away from me, and I shall be indeed alone. Poor fellow. If pity you can feel, leave me my story. See at your feet they kneel, your hearts you cannot steal against the sad, sad tale of the lonely orphan boy. glory, for they would have taken my daughters over the billowy waters. If I hadn't an elegant diction, indulged in an innocent fiction, which is not in the same category as telling a regular terrible story. If he's telling a terrible story, he's trying to forget his glory. It's one of the cruelest stories I've ever known in these waters. It is easy, elegant diction, to poison an innocent fiction, which is not in the same category as telling a regular terrible story. It's easy, elegant diction, to poison an innocent fiction. Oh, 
about you and the calm excellence of your wisdom. Reconcile it with your conscience and say something that will relieve my father's sorrow. And I will try, dear Mabel. But why does he sit night after night in this drafty old ruin? Why do I sit here? But to escape from the pirate's clutches, I describe myself as an orphan. But heaven help me, I am no orphan. I come here to humble myself before the tombs of my ancestors and to implore their pardon for having brought dishonor on the family escutcheon. <laughs> but, sir, you forget. You only bought the property a year ago, and the stucco in your baronial hall is scarcely dry. <laughs> Frederick, in this chapel there are ancestors. You cannot deny that. With the estate, I bought the chapel and its contents. <laughs> I don't know whose ancestors they were, but I know whose ancestors they are. And I shudder to think that their descendant by purchase, if I may so describe myself, should have brought disgrace on what I have no doubt was an unstained discussion. Be comforted. Had you not acted as you did, these reckless men would have assuredly called in the nearest clergyman and have married your large family on the spot. I thank you for your proffered solace, but it is unavailing. I assure you, Frederick, such is the anguish and remorse I feel at the abominable falsehood by which I escape these easily deluded pirates, that I would go to their simple-minded chief this very night and confess all did I not fear that the consequences would be most disastrous to myself. At what time does your expedition march against these scoundrels? At 11. And before midnight, I hope to atone for my involuntary association with the pestilent scourges by sweeping them from the face of the earth. And then, dear Mabel, you will be mine. Are your devoted followers at hand? They are. They only await my orders. <laughs> Then, Frederick, let your escort, Lion Hearted, be summoned to receive a general's blessing ere they depart upon their dread adventure. Dear sir, they come. Foam and bears the steel. Tarantara, tarantara. We uncomfortable feel. Tarantara. And we find the wisest thing. Tarantara, tarantara. Is to slap our chests and sing. Tarantara. For when threatened with emutes. Tarantara, tarantara. And your heart is in your boots. Tarantara. There is nothing brings it round like the trump, its martial sound, like the trump, its martial sound. Tarantara, 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 Everything. Tarantara, tarantara. These attentions are well meant. Tarantara. Such expressions don't appear. Tarantara, tarantara. Calculated men to cheer. Tarantara. Who are going to meet their fate in a highly nervous state? Tarantara, tarantara, tarantara. Still to us it's everything. These attentions are well meant. Tarantara, tarantara, tarantara. Go and do your best, 
of coming back. Still perhaps it would be wise not to cut or criticise, for it's very evident these attentions are well meant. Yes, it's very evident these attentions are well meant. Evident, yes, well meant. Evident, ah, yes, well meant. When the bowling is to enter up, to enter up, And so I will be merciful. Say on. <laughs> when you had left our pirate boat, we tried to raise our spirits, fit according to our custom mode, with quip and quibble quaint. But all in vain the quips we had we lay and sobbed upon the rocks until to somebody occurred a startling paradox. A paradox. A paradox, a most ingenious paradox. With quips and quibbles, hand and flocks, but none to beat us paradox. <laughs> a paradox, a paradox, the most ingenious paradox. <laughs> a paradox. <laughs> We knew your 
taste for curious bits for cranks and contradictions queer. And with the laughter on our lips, we wished you there to hear. We said if we could tell it him, how Frederick would the joke enjoy. And so we've risked both life and limb to tell it to our boy. That paradox, that paradox, that most ingenious paradox. We quips and quibbles heard in flocks, but none to beat that paradox. <laughs> A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. <laughs> a paradox. <laughs> For some ridiculous reason, to which, however, I've no desire to be disloyal. Some person in authority, I don't know who, very likely the astronomer royal has decided that although for such a beastly month as February, 28 days as a rule are plenty, one year in every four his day shall be reckoned as nine and twenty. By some singular coincidence, I wouldn't be surprised if it were owing to the agency of an ill-natured fairy. You are the victim of this clumsy arrangement having been born in leap year on the 29th of February. And so, by a simple arithmetical process, you'll easily discover that though you've lived 21 years, yet, if we go by birthdays, you're only five. <laughs> Little bit over. <laughs> The ways of paradox At common sense she gaily mocks Though counting in the usual way Years twenty-one I've been alive Yet reckoning by my natal day Yet reckoning by my natal day One, two, three, four I am a little boy of five A little boy of five <laughs> A paradox, a paradox, a most ingenious paradox. A paradox, a curious paradox. A most ingenious paradox. On my word, this is most curious, most absurdly whimsical. Five and a quarter. <laughs> well, no one would think it to look at me. You are glad now, I'll be bound, that you spared us. You would never have forgiven yourself when you discovered you had killed two of your comrades. My comrades? I'm afraid you don't appreciate the delicacy of your position. You were apprenticed to us. Until I reach my 21st. No, until you reach your 21st birthday. Then going by birthdays, you are as yet only five and a quarter. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mean to say you're going to hold me to that. No, we merely remind you of the fact and leave the rest to your sense of duty. Your sense of duty? Don't put it on that footing. As I was merciful to you just now, be merciful to me. I implore you not to insist on the letter of your bond just as the cup of happiness is at my lips. We insist on nothing. We content ourselves with pointing out to you your duty. Your duty! Well, you have appealed to my sense of duty. And my duty is only too clear. I abhor your infamous calling. I shudder at the thought that I have ever been mixed up with it. But duty is before all. At any cost, I will do my duty. Bravely spoken. Come, you're one of us once more. Lead on, I follow. Oh, horror! What's, What's the, the matter? matter? Ought I to tell you? No, no, I cannot do it. And yet as one of your bands. Speak out! 
I charge you by that sense of conscientiousness to which we have never yet appealed in vain. General Stanley, yes. Yes. the father of my Mabel, yes. 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 he escaped from you on the plea that he was an orphan. He did. Oh, it breaks my heart to betray the honoured father of the girl I adore. Break, Break it. it. But as your apprentice, I have no alternative. It is my duty to tell you yes. Yes. that General Stanley yes. 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 is no orphan. What? But more than that, he never was one. Oh! Am I to understand that to save his contemptible life, he dared practice on our credulous simplicity. <gasps> our revenge shall be swift and terrible. We shall go and gather our band and attack Trimorton Castle this very night. But stay. Not a word. He is doomed. Away, away, away my heart's on fire. I burn the space to steps and do repay. This very night, my vengeance dire shall cut itself, itself and gone away, away. Away, away, ere I expire, I find my duty hard to do today. My heart is filled with anguish dire, it strikes me to the car away, away. It falls so proudly, tricked us all upright, the vengeance how the pirates all decide. A major son is softened with his lies, and in return tonight the traitor dies. Yes, yes, yes tonight, tonight the traitor, traitor dies. dies. Yes, 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 tonight, tonight the traitor, traitor dies. dies. Tonight he dies. Yes, or early tomorrow. This girl's likewise. They were weltering in sorrow. The ones of spot. In their ditches they cherish. And all who plot. To abuse it or perish. Tonight he dies. Yes, or early tomorrow. These girls likewise they were weltering in sorrow. The ones of spot in their ditches they cherish. And all who plot to abuse it or perish. Away, away, away. Tonight the traitor dies.
then return and claim you. I declare it. It seems so long. Swear that till then you will be true to me. Sensible to fear as anybody here, as anybody. sense of duty. That makes a difference, of course. At the same time, we repeat, we cannot understand it at all. No matter. Our course is clear. We must do our best to capture these pirates. Alone! It is most distressing to us to be the agents whereby our erring fellow creatures are deprived of that liberty which is so dear to all. But we should have thought that before we join the force. We should. It's too late now. <laughs> when 
man, a failing not engaged in his employment. His employment. For maturing his felonious little plans. Little plans. His capacity for innocent enjoyment. Sent enjoyment. Is just as great as any honest man. Honest man. Our feelings we with difficulty smother. Difficulty smother. When constabulary duties to be done. To be done. I take one consideration with another. With another. A policeman's lot is not an happy one. Oh. When constabulary duties to be done. To be done. A policeman's lot is not a happy one. When the enterprising burglar's not a burgling, not a burgling. When the cutthroat isn't occupied in crime, hide in crime. He loves to hear the little brook a gurgling, brook a gurgling, and listen to the merry village chime, village chime. When the cost is finished, jumping on his mother, on his mother. He loves to lie a basking in the sun, in the sun. I'll take one consideration with another with another a policeman's lot is not an happy one oh. when constabulary duties to be done to be done a policeman's lot is not a happy one happy one
feel in silence tread a cautious way we feel no sound at all we never speak a word a flying sport all we deceives we heard come friends who plow the sea trust to navigation take another station let's bury piracy with a little bit
you've contrived but your proud triumph will not be long lived don't say all orphans for we know that game on your allegiance we've a stronger claim we charge you yield we charge you Resume your 
your ranks and legislative duties and take my daughters, all of whom are beauties. <laughs> Oh,